In this section of the exhibition, I'm joined by Natalia Sidlina, another of my wonderful Russian colleagues and a curator on the exhibition. We're going to look at what many people think of as the golden age of the Russian space program. Well, we're standing here at the threshold of what many people think of as the beginning of the golden age of the Russian space program. The arrival of Sputnik was a real sensation. Tell us something about it. Sputnik, uh, or fellow traveller, marked the beginning of the space age. It's the very first man-made object to go into space and orbit the Earth. And of course, what's quite amusing about the Sputnik story is although it's the first proper satellite, it did remarkably little. I mean, there was a great panic in Europe and particularly in America, but in fact it was simply sending a, a very basic radio signal, wasn't it? Absolutely, and this is what is precious about this engineering model in particular. It's a twin brother of the very Sputnik which launched the space era. And as you can see, those wires and this radio transmitter right in its core, that's the only equipment which this satellite carried. So its only mission was to mark the beginning of the space age and to send a signal across the world about the Soviet Union being first nation to orbit the Earth. So this exhibition is full of the most fantastic graphic arts and applied arts, but I think we do have to talk about this incredibly iconic poster. It's the work of the famous poster designer from the Second World War, whose name was Irakli Taidze. And as you can see, uh, the imagery he used was very familiar to general public from the days of the war. So we have Mother Russia signalling the achievement of the landing a spacecraft on the surface of the moon. And we see a little rocket whizzing from the Earth bathing in the rays of the rising sun towards this planet. The interesting thing about this poster is there's very little space technology. What we can see is just a tiny little rocket which doesn't look at all like R7, the famous rocket which launched the Sputnik into space. And this is because the space technology was classified and the images of the rocket were not shown to the designers. So they had to invent completely new imagery to satisfy the thirst for space propaganda design. Well, Natalia, we saw earlier the incredible moment in the space program, which was Sputnik. And we're now in a section called Scouts of the Cosmos, which is looking at other great innovations from the Russian space program and not about manned missions. What actually is this object behind us? This famous object, also known as Object D, and it meant to play a very important historical role. It meant to be the very first man-made object to go into space, uh, to be Sputnik 1. It's a proper space laboratory. And by the time it was developed, it appeared to be too big and sophisticated to go to the space first. And Korolev, the famous chief designer of the Soviet space program, had to go for something less sophisticated. And this is how we ended up with a much simpler design of Sputnik 1. Can we look at a rather intriguing object here? which is uh, a globe, and when you first look at it, you might think it's the Earth, but it's not the Earth. What is, what is this object? It's the first globe of the moon surface, and it's a small token of thank you from the Academy of Sciences of the Soviet Union to Sir Patrick Moore, a distinguished British astronomer and the broadcaster of the Sky at Night programme. Sir Patrick Moore was instrumental 
in uh, providing very important data both to NASA and to the Soviet space mission about the surface of the Moon. Now the other object I can see behind you is another important part of the lunar program. This is um, a Lunar 9 and uh, um, it's very important from the technological point of view because it was the first spacecraft which soft landed on another celestial body. But let's move forward a little to 1970. Um, and the reason I wanted to ask you about this is, of course, when one thinks of this period, 1969, the Apollo mission, and just after that, when all the world's attention is on the American achievement, the Russians do something extraordinary a year later. What happened with this probe, it's not only soft landed on the surface of the moon, uh, it also managed to return a probe back to Earth, and the probe contained the samples of the Moon's surface. And the interesting thing about this object in particular, it also was completely remotely controlled. Now, we've been looking previously at some very shiny objects about the exploration of the Moon, but this object is pretty brutal. Venera 7, and it's one of the highlights of uh, our exhibition. It's a real probe designed to land on the surface of another planet. Its twin brother landed on Venice in 1970 and uh, was the first to survive the horrible conditions of this planet which is very close to the sun and therefore incredibly hot uh, with acidic atmosphere and incredible gravitation field so the designers of this probe in particular and you can see how robust it is mm -hmm. were very much surprised when this particular mission managed to land on the surface of the planet and transmitted very valuable data for 23 minutes. So 23 minutes sounds quite modest, but when you think uh, uh, from memory, I think this is right, that the temperature of Venus is about 500 degrees centigrade. So to survive for 2.3 seconds would be amazing, but 23 minutes is quite something. Let's begin to talk about the journey towards the central concept that lies at the heart of this exhibition, which is, of course, human space exploration. Let's go and look at the beginning of that story. Well, Natalia, I said that we would uh, leave the unmanned world and talk about uh, the human quest, but in order to get to that, we have to tell the story about the first space dog and this truly extraordinary object here. This is um, Sputnik 2, which took the first mammal into Earth's orbit and it was the dog everyone knows about, it was Laika. But unfortunately the technology wasn't sophisticated enough to allow for the spacecraft to return back to Earth. So let's um, end our discussion about the, the dogs with the very successful mission that I also get asked about a lot, which is these two dogs depicted here in a wonderful propaganda poster. Their names are famous, they are of course Belka Belka and Strelka. Strelka, exactly. So that's marked the, this decisive point when it was proved that uh, a mammal, though small one, could be sent into space and then safely returned back to Earth. 